Um, can you tell me if there's sound now? Is there any sound? There should be sound. I'll try again. I have a different sound set up today because my microphone is out of batteries. Um, let, you guys let me know if you can hear anything. Because I can't monitor. There was sound when I was monitoring. But let me know. Yep, yeah, okay. All right, so sorry for missing last week. Um, we're in the middle of production. I guess I'll, I can show you really quick maybe what we're doing. Um, so I have to use a, I'm using a Yeti right now. So there's going to be a lot of sound of cars and air. Unfortunately, I tried to get it the best I could, um, but it's not going to be great. I'm just charging my batteries on my head, my head mic, uh, and it's going to take a while. I accidentally left it on. So anyways, uh, what I thought we would do today is paint some of this scene and maybe move into the tree and do some stuff like that. I know it's kind of boring. You know, we've been doing a lot of painting tutorials. I just need something to paint it so that we can start compositing and building a, a scene out of it. So that's kind of what we have to do. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I've been working, I've been playing in Unreal and I've been putting Harry Hill stuff in there. Um, so once this is further along, I kind of want to show you guys how this is going. Um, it looks a little rough right now. Like I'm still working on the, all the various assets in, in the, in the production, but, uh, it's just a test. We're just seeing, trying to see how things look, um, in general without, with like, it's still pretty raw. So we're still sorting it out. We don't have any movement on the trees or anything. And these, this grass needs to be worked on to be flattened out a little bit. So it's not so gamey looking, but, uh, anyway, so we're kind of kind of playing with that stuff um, and again it's like I'm really trying to figure out the the 2.5 D assets like the stuff that we've we've talked about before um, so all these assets are just like 2d the one thing that kind of sucks in most game engines is the alpha channels which we're working on that you can see these are really low resolution right now but they don't have nice smooth transitions which we get in After Effects or in Maya so things tend to look kind of crunchy and not very nice. So I'm trying to, we're trying to figure that out so that we can make the alpha channels look smoother and more organic. Um, so that they're not so, yeah, they can be a little bit yucky looking. And this, this is like the benefit of After Effects and stuff is that the alpha channels look beautiful. Um, so anyways, so that's, that's what we've been doing and I'm trying to put this together. So last week I couldn't really stream because we were, crushing on this thing to try to see if this was a good route to take. Um, but it's coming along, it's coming along. Um, and then, yeah, so I've also been painting all these rocks and stuff for the project. And these are all done in Rebel. So this is another thing I've been doing, um, which I think we've gone over before how to paint them. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as colors, Pachelovic, I think like, I think I'm gonna go for kind of, um, sort of like what we just saw. I think, I'm not sure, like, uh, I think the colors that we had, what you saw in the game engine, I think I'm going to go for those. I like them with like a little bit of brown and black and white and stuff. So we're going to try that and see if, if it doesn't feel good in the long run, then I'll start adding more color. But I started adding more color and I just didn't feel like it fit the tone of the film. Actually, I'll pull this up one more time and we can kind of can talk about it a little bit while I'll we'll do this while it loads. Um, today, I've also, I, I guess, so to jump back to this thing, I've, I've added some snow into this shot. I'm just starting putting in snow chunks and stuff like that. But um, anyways, so I'll just show you again. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Just open that project. It'll take a second to load, and I'll just do this for a sec. Uh, anyways, I've been painting snow bits. There it is. Okay, let's go here, oh, levels. Um, there's no real, re no real big reason right now. It's just we're, I think mainly we're experimenting. We're trying to see which ones work better for what we're trying to do. Um, I definitely like the material editing process in Unreal the best so far. Um, the little girl's a little messed up. Her hair's all messed up. You can see it's like inside her face. But um, overall, uh, it's been, I think it's been working really nicely. 
like we've got we managed to get some really nice materials on the little girl character like these these creases and paper creases aren't actually going to be that extreme and nor will they be so straight but they're starting to look pretty nice the shadows are getting there we're not perfect on anything quite yet but overall the the lighting and the feeling is getting there we're just missing a little bit of back face shadows and stuff like that which we're sorting out trying to see um Oh, animation schools in America? Well, I can recognize, uh, in Canada, I know more. Um, I was like, Sheraton apparently, it used to be really good. I don't know how it is now. Sheraton in Toronto, in Canada. And then, um, what was the other one? There's one in BC that's really good, uh, really, really well known. But there's CalArts, which is American, which is, uh, that's like kind of like the go-to animation school. Um, but what was the other one? It's one I really wanted to go to in BC, and it's actually really quite cheap. Um, uh, what's it called? It starts with a C. Um, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm always so bad at remembering names. Let me just go here really quick. Um, Animation School, BC, Canada. What is it called? It is called, um, what's it called? Capilano. This one right here, Capilano is really, really, really good. Uh, also, VFS is really good. Vancouver Film School is really good. I don't know as much about American schools. So, um, and as far as tips for your portfolio, from what I know about it, I would recommend like if you can get a little bit of figure figure work in there. They, I mean, they kind of expect that they're going to be teaching you, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but if you can get some basic figure studies in there, like practice up on your figure stuff a little bit. Um, I'm trying to, there's a good YouTube site, uh, I can't remember what it's called, that talks about this stuff. But I would say you need some figure work, figure drawing, you're gonna be doing a lot of figure drawing. Uh, and you're also, I wouldn't worry as much about animation, examples of animation, or even examples of knowing tech really well. Most of the schools are going to be more geared towards like hand drawing. Like I think you spend the first year uh, with just using paper. Maybe they are more digital now, but uh, mostly you really want to have your drawing skills up. I would take look at some like, uh, there's some really good examples on YouTube for drawing fundamentals. Um, I'm just gonna check and see really quick what, there's a couple of art channels that I follow. I wish there was a way to browse the channels that you follow um, by theme. And I don't know, maybe do you guys know how to do that? I, I have no idea how to browse my subscriptions by theme. But there's, anyways, there's a ton, if, if you guys can recommend any, there's a ton of really good art channels that kind of give you the fundamentals and those are really good things to practice, like basic perspective, uh, basic figure drawing. Um, even if you look, just look up, like it is good if you can actually get into a, a 3D figure, but just showing a general interest and uh, is going to help your chances. They're not expecting you to be amazing. At least that's what I heard and that's kind of what I've heard before. So I don't know if that helps you or not, but uh, just let me know. Um, okay, so anyways, we're gonna move away from this uh, this project, but I just wanted to sort of give you guys a little peek at where it's where it's at. Um, it tends to look not as nice when you're here versus like once you go into a camera. This is also very low resolution. So these are cameras, different cameras, and they have the depth of field. This one I did a little bit of color work and added some noise and stuff to the camera. I think we can go full screen by hitting F11. Whoa, it's like done something. Okay. Anyways, I've done, I'm thinking, anyways, as far as color palette, I'm thinking something kind of like this. It's like a mix of black and white with a little bit of color uh, here and there, but I didn't want to do a bunch of greens on all the trees and stuff like that because I feel like it just gets so distracting, but we're going to figure that out. Maybe I'll just have to make the movie more fall. We'll see, like fall feeling, we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to close this project now. Okay, so now we're back here. I'm just gonna close this one too so we don't eat up all our memory. So my rocks. Okay, and then there's the winter robot. But this one doesn't have any snow, this one has snow. This is my ground cover. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we're just gonna do some painting. Um, unfortunately, I know it's not super fun. I just need to get the scene finished so I can actually have something to work with. So let's do this tree since it's more interesting. We've done a couple of grounds. Now these grounds eventually will be adding more lighting to them. We'll be doing something like a, a uh, an overlay layer on them or something. And we will add 
um, a whole lot more um, kind of light on top of them. Is this even working? Right. We're in eraser mode. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we'll be doing stuff like adding some colored light to it to give stuff a little more form, depending on what's going on. So just by using an overlay layer, I can add light areas and we can push shadows and stuff like that. So we will be doing that at the last stage because right now everything's quite flat. It's a little bit gray and flat and we'll sort of figure that out as we go. So I'll, we'll, we'll do that after. So first off, let's, we're gonna structure in this tree a little bit. So I'm using um, a lot of brushes from the store since this is kind of like a project that's also designed to help me test the store brushes and kind of get things going on that end. Um, and I'm just gonna just do really quick. Bop, bop, bop. Just bear with me for one second. I know it's a, such a slow start. It's the slowest start ever recording. Uh, video capture. I just have to change. Okay, we'll just cancel. And we are going to, I'm just gonna start recording. Let me know if things slow down. Um, at all or act weird on the screen. Okay, so we're just gonna start blocking in this tree. So in the um, brushes from the store, uh, the Nature Mega Pack, I have something for building trees. So we've got plants and we've got these tree builders. And what I've got here is these really opaque brushes for trunks, tree trunks and stuff. So that'll be, be a snow layer. We're eventually gonna build the snowy banks and stuff like that, like these things, but we won't do that now. So let's just do, we'll start the tree. So I built these really hard brushes like that. Let's put this down to like 50%. And these are kind of like for, for specifically for building trees, literally. They just have a bit of texture to them. They're a bit random. I kind of was inspired, well, very, very much inspired by Aaron Blaze's brushes that I bought, some of his tree brushes. And the, his tree brushes were like this, like really cool, Brushes for building. Yes, I'm going to be doing, the, I'm, we're gonna go the whole way through on this one because this is another scene for the walkie talkie project, um, which for any of you guys that were following along before I stopped streaming for a while, we were working on this walkie talkie film, which was like this little robot walking in the woods. Same process, same brushes. It's just another shot um, that I can get into from start to finish a little more than the last one because I've already built, I already built a big scene, um, but that one was largely Maya. And I have to also know from you guys, if you're interested in seeing the, like, the 3D route, or if you're more interested in just seeing like an After Effects only. I'll pull it up actually really quick while, we're, while I'm working. Just save this out. Okay, so I'm doing similar things for, for Harry Hill, which we're doing in the game engine. What's interesting, which, which I think is what's kind of cool about the, these techniques that I'm showing you guys is, well, at least what I'm discovering, is not only are they good for After Effects or other things like that, but they're also being very, very cool in VR, like, because we tested one of the scenes in VR, like the walkie-talkie scene. So this is a scene that's built using same, the same exact technique we're working on right now. And I think some of you guys have probably seen this already, but it's just a whole bunch of, like, flat layers stacked on top of each other. Now the game engines, like what I was talking about earlier is game engines don't really like these nice alphas. They tend to like ruin them because they lose their softness. A lot of the alphas get pretty hard. So definitely uh, they work a lot better inside of something like Maya. Even if you bring this into Element 3D um, inside of After Effects, um, Element will, will kind of wreck your alphas too because it operates on the same principles as game engines. So the game engines have a really hard time with semi-transparent uh, layers and depth of field. So they can do them, but they, you'll get zero depth of field. So we're using a very similar, we're gonna do a kind of a, at least that was my idea, is to do a fairly similar process with these um, 2.5D assets, which are all just painted in After Effects and then, and then sculpted. Um, and then we're going to continue this this sort of story in this set. So we're going from here. There's like another scene over here, which which I'm still building some of the assets for. And then we go into this kind of winter scene. Um, oh, thanks, Hero. Yeah, thanks for thanks for the compliments. 
Um, yeah, we're, we're anyways. Yeah, the the Unreal stuff's coming along. It's coming along. It's it's still very much in its early stages. So I wouldn't say it's even close to uh, final, but we're getting close to getting. I'm just trying to see, we're trying to see if we can catch the feeling we're looking for, and if we can, then then we're off to the races. We're getting closer. There's definite limitations to both Unity and Unreal. Neither of them are going to solve all your problems. Each one comes with their own with their own caveats. Um, I'm liking Unreal really a lot for its material editor, but I know that uh, Unity is also getting a pretty robust overhaul of their material editor. Oh, wicked. They're going to have timeline and keyframes? That's amazing. That would be wicked. I'd love to see that. Um, okay, so we're going to paint this tree first. And then we're going to we're, we're going to do the main structure first, and then what we'll do is we'll probably break it up so that it'll make a nice a nicer three D object, or two point five D object. I've been doing a lot of two point five D trees for the last while here, so I'm finally starting to get the hang of it, and I'm really getting the hang of our our plugin, uh, the Maya plugin or the after the sorry the Photoshop plugin for. Let's just do this. How did, what was, uh, what is CG event? Is that a website or is that like a, was that an actual kind of event thing? I'm following the concept art pretty closely. So the key about these, the, these tree brush, branch brushes essentially is that they're really opaque. Um, I think I'll paint the tree. Uh, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence about painting the whole tree really solid first and then Because I know this is gonna have to this this will have to be a separate piece at some point if we really want it to come off nicely Oh cool. So did was the conference informative? Did you learn a lot? I think like a, another cool just as I'm waiting to hear from Shelvik, the uh, other cool thing you can do with 2.5D trees is you can build a few different layers and then actually stack them up. And those can make your trees look even cooler um, and still maintain like a really illustrated feel. So you could do, let's say we have this base layer right here of this main tree. Um, then what you could do is you could have another layer. It's a little more painting, I guess, but you could have another layer that's kind of like another part of that tree. So you could actually use multiple layers to build up the th like the tree structure. So if we wanted to be a little more interesting and give this tree kind of like come like here, then we have that little thing. Maybe this one could be this branch here. It could lead into this branch here like that. Instead of doing both branches on one chunk. But it's something we can kind of do after because it, it will slow us down in our painting a lot and it might actually hold up the design process a bit too much. So we want to be careful there. But it's a cool way um, that you can work. I'm just going to grab my eraser and make it the same thing as a tree build. Oh no, it's forcing me to use the... Blur. I don't love that feature in the new Photoshop. It's it's mostly because it treats all brushes by default like tools. And I kind of hate it sometimes. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, anyways. I'm just gonna do this really quick. I'm building out two layers for this, which we, we will paint out. And this can be like a cool root, I guess, or something. See how cool we can make this tree look. I'm gonna turn off the foreground layers. Okay, cool. All right, so that's one layer. So we have one layer here. This is our second layer. I'm just gonna erase this off a little bit. Cool. It's gonna be like a, a really like rooty looking tree. Cool. Volumetrics, that's great. Is it like for, for volumetric 
fog and stuff, or is it just volumetric particles or volumetric 3D masses, like liquids and stuff? Like, I'd be curious to know. I know I'm kind of redoing some work here, but I want to just get some cool stuff to do on this tree. So it'll be neat if we have one layer and then we have another layer. We'll just add an extra branch here. The nice thing about these brushes is they're kind of square and chunky and there's a benefit to that because it gives you that this like this like kind of bark feeling like if you look close there's a lot going on in the edges and i also made it so the edges are a bit fuzzy oh vdb files okay cool like vdb files for anyone who doesn't know or maybe and just correct me if i'm wrong they're like volumetric fluid simulations or cloud simulations and stuff that you might do in something like Maya or Nuke, or not Nuke, sorry, or Houdini or something like that. I'm just gonna erase this part off because I wanna keep, we're gonna get rid of that part because we don't want it on this one. Gone. Well, not gone, I guess. Gone now, there we go. So I'm gonna build like a bit of a multi-layered tree here, which will be cool. So that's like a foreground piece. That becomes a background piece or the middle piece. Just flesh this out so we have a good flow on it. Maybe we'll do one more just to be the back, back, back piece. I'll make that just a little darker. Volumetric light fractal noise in that. Lots of features. You even found a node root. Whoa, cool. That sounds amazing. I'm just gonna go in here really quickly. Let's turn this guy off. I'm gonna just erase a little bit. And I just wanna have one little thing that's gonna be like a, a root thing that we can use. Cool. We're gonna try to find the structure of the tree after we've done the silhouette. It's not always the best way to work. I have no idea what the best way to work is. This is just the way that I work. Okay, so let's and knock this down just a little bit so that we have something we can do with the background layer, which will help create even more depth. Maybe we'll even add one more like branch for the back, back, back layer. So over here, we'll go to our brush. We'll fatten this up a lot. Actually, I just wanna erase off here just a little. Keep this interesting. Cool. Oh, cool. I'll go to your Instagram, check it, check it out. Uh, uh, Pachelvic, which edges are you talking about? Like, um, anything, anything that's like a, a generally nice alpha will, will suck in a game engine so far from what I've learned. Uh, anything with, the, with softness or, um, Variation you can crank it up though. I mean, that's that's what we're experimenting with in the unreal engine right now is What happens if you crank up? We're just trying to find the right balance so you can crank up the texture detail a lot um, So you can read the thing is is you can render out Really really high resolution really really easily so you can render out at 8k really fast and you're only looking at a few minutes of frame so we're trying that and we're seeing how that looks and when you render out at 8K, your alpha channels get super high resolution. So they, they tend to look better. Um, so we found that for one thing. Uh, so that's, that's promising to some degree. And then the, uh, there's a few other options and things that you can do with the engine. And another, another option that we're, like, we're exploring is looking at um, rendering it in passes. And the, it's mostly because what happens with the game engine, as soon as you have complex alpha channels on, it murders the depth of field. And we're really, there's a, I, I really need to use a lot of depth of field in Harry Hill. I depend on depth of field quite a bit for a lot of storytelling. So I don't really want to get rid of it. I'm just adding this branch. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure we're not going to need it, but I'm just putting it in because I feel like I want to make as much use of this layer as possible. It might make the tree look too like prongy. Well, oh, I guess the other option is is we could go. Let me just undo that. Turn it 
turn this one here. Sorry, this is so boring. Okay, we're just gonna. I'm gonna do uh, one of the, this branch here on this layer. I'm gonna give it a little more character. I guess I don't really need them all to terminate the way I've been off the screen. Because we may want to come in on the scene a little bit. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we'll do that one like that. Great. So now we've got a couple of branches. I'm going to get rid of the secondary branch on this one. Going. It's kind of ugly, anyways. Crank this back up. Cool, we're almost done. I think to me, like, this is the hardest part of a tree, is getting a nice silhouette. Especially, I mean, again, the reason, like, I have to, the reason I have to think of everything this way is because I'm doing it for animation. If this was that painting, I would not think of a tree like this. I would not, I would not go through this effort breaking the tree up into so many fundamental parts. Oops. Have any of you guys um, tried the new, the new Photoshop release? I think I asked this a, a week ago or so, but I'm just wondering if anyone's picked it up since. Uh, we haven't started working on a new shader code. We're not really, we don't know Unreal well enough at this point to, to do that. And I don't think it's not so much a shader limitation as it is actually like a limitation of the way that they use graphics cards to render real time. That's what the real problem is. We talked to one of the guys at Unreal and they were telling us that it's a known issue, um, but there's not really that, and I, I could be, I'm hopefully I'm representing what he said properly, but um, it's a known issue and there's not really an easy workaround yet that anyone's figured out. Uh, because it has, it's to do with the way that um, render engines sort layers and how they render efficiently and they don't, mm, you want to be able to see through semi-transparent layers with depth of field, you need to like, measure the alpha of every pixel. So you have to go through the entire scene and look at every alpha um, value of every pixel and every shot to, so that then you can do a proper depth of field on it. Um, because the depth of field is based on what pixels are closest to the screen and how far back you can see them. And so you, you could have inside of a semi-transparent pixel a whole bunch of different depths visible that would then change their contribution to depth of field. So it's very complicated from what they were explaining to us and there's not really an easy fix. We're looking at an experimental build of possibly, but the, the main thing they said to try first is just try to make, find a way to make it work and look good with the limitations of the engine because they're kind of limitations of all real-time rendering, apparently. At least that's my understanding of it. Okay, this is gonna be a crazy tree. Okay, so let's start painting a tree. So these are all our different components. I might, I might move things around a little bit here and there to try to get more interesting structures out of the tree. Okay, so the first thing, first thing is first, I guess. Um, this, I'm just gonna round this out a little bit. We're gonna bend all this stuff around later anyways. You wouldn't have to, you could just use this. This could be just an After Effects tree too. I'm gonna add like little moss and stuff to the alpha channels and things like that. Okay, a very rooted, rooty tree. Probably will end up wanting to make these a little more, a little less smooth, we'll see. Okay, and then let's just turn this off. I want to fix this guy a little bit more. Okay, let's give it a little more variety. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
Okay, cool. Um, there, all right. Let's just start painting in this thing. Not quite sure the best way to do this, but we're just going to wing it and see what happens. Okay, so we have quite a few layers to work with now. I was throwing in a little bit of color, but now the color is completely wrong. And we will pull this over for reference, just so we can kind of keep our colors on track. And I'll probably just use the texture brush, this one here, to start filling it up. And just to keep things simple to start, I'm just going to lock the transparency on these layers for now, just to get the main forms in. And I might, I might sample to start it's just some colors. Let's do the back one first. It's gonna kind of be like a cold purpley color. And then anything that's like, I will be thinking of sort of the sky Anything that's sort of sky facing is going to be a little bit more like wood colored and stuff. Um, I'll probably I'll probably do this with the snow on it right away. I'm not sure. I probably should, but I'm not sure yet. Let's just get the main structures in. It's important to think of the branch like what it's doing. Is it facing the sky where, you know, what parts are facing upwards, which ones are facing down? That helps me kind of get the initial structure in place. So also I have to pay attention. Like if, if a shape is vertical, it's going to have a different amount of light on it than if it's a like horizontal. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think, I think Pramod, I think everybody from my understanding Anyone who's working with Unreal has the, you ha you do have access to the source, apparently. Um, I haven't gotten into it that far yet, but um, so you could. Uh, I'm not sure, apparently, like, apparently they're working on stuff right now, the, the development team at Unreal, they're working on stuff for these kinds of solutions because everyone's so aggressively trying to get their game engine used for film development. So alpha channels are a really big part of film production. And so far in games, they've, they've been just, you know, overlooked, not overlooked. They're just not an easy problem to solve. And it's not really being a big priority because it didn't need to be. So I think like, um, it's going to be getting some love for the next little while. I'm not sure if any of it would actually be in time for what we're trying to do. That's interesting. Duplicated the layer by accident. Okay. So I think the sun, I can't remember where the sun is exactly, but I have to figure that out. Oh, thanks, Yoshi. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming on and watching the stream. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure, like the R&D behind it, like uh, there'd probably be a lot of R&D around something like that, yeah. It's not like, an, it's. It, I don't think it's an easy thing to achieve, but it is something we're interested in, in finding a way to pull off for sure. Okay, so we've got, I've kind of, hmm, I've lost track of my root color for the tree. I guess it's kind of a brownish color, I suppose. So as we get more blue in the brown, we're quite kind of moving towards here. So we have to kind of go through the grays and desaturate because we're not going to go into the greens and the pinks. Um, so I'm just trying to pick kind of where my, my light colors are. My, I think the sun's a bit low in this scene. Let me just double check. Well, I guess we have a painting. The sun's kind of over here. So let's just do this really quick and let's see where we're at. So we should have a bit of light in there. This will be quite dark. Uh, unfortunately, we are not going to paint the whole tree in this video. Not, we never get anything done in these videos, unfortunately, because everything just takes so long to do. Um, I don't, the streams are short, relatively short. A three hour stream, we could probably finish some kind of painting. I'm also not that fast. Um, I don't know, do you guys ever watch like, uh, Boro Dante? I think that's how you say his name. He's really good, I really like his stuff. Very talented, he's also really good to learn from. 
I learned a lot from him. Okay, so here on this end, I'm really gonna, for now I'm gonna cool this down, make it quite cool. I'm assuming it might be covered in moss and stuff, but it's also going to have a little bit of wood color in it. And it will also, ref it's going to reflect light from the snow. There's gonna be a lot of bounce light coming up in this area. So we're not gonna go, we don't wanna go super dark. Most of our darks will be because of ambient occlusion. So I'm kind of imagining light coming up and hitting here. If you see like there's a bunch of snow here, there's gonna be a little less because we also have a shadow being cast by the tree, uh, kind of a top down shadow. So it's like global illumination if you think about it. So we'd have kind of a, a darker core. We'd have light coming from here, from top down, light coming from the sun, like general light all over the place because it's so cloudy, but we're gonna have a hot spot, which is over in this corner. So we're going to get light shining on the sides of the tree a bit. And then the snow is going to essentially act as a reflector and bounce a bunch of light back up towards the tree. So in these areas, we'll go a little bit more green and let the snow kind of act as a light source. I had a bunch of references, which I think I pulled up. I think I put them in here. Oh no, that's not them. But it was interesting, the stuff I was looking at, it was interesting what snow's like in the middle of the forest. It's crazy how white it is. Like, isn't that ridiculous? It's just like raw white. It goes from green to pure white. And there's also, this is a little overexposed, but there's a bit of purplish colors and stuff like that in there. That was interesting. I was also looking at this great painting. I love this painting. I didn't know about it. I was looking up snowy paintings. This person's amazing. Um, and then what was the other one? I was looking at this one too. This gives us a good sense of like how dark, the, how bright, the, big the contrast can get. Um, so I'm using this as reference as well. Um, Pramod's asking, uh, did I try Unity? Yes, we've tried Unity, but we haven't tried in as much depth yet as far as rendering and stuff like that. Um, we're, we, we've done a lot of work in Unity for animation and building pipe, like basic animation pipe, pipelines in Unity, but we haven't, we didn't go as far in the rendering stuff. And mostly a lot of that for me came down to how difficult it was to get the materials working properly. And because there's a lot of, to make custom materials in Unity from my experience and without a bunch of plugins, it's, there's a lot of coding involved. Um, Cause you can't, if you want to change like a property or link, like, so I was doing a lot of stuff in Unreal where I was taking, let's say the, a color property and tying it to the distance or the angle that it's facing to or from the camera, stuff like that. And I, it was really hard to do things like that in inside of Unity at this stage, at least for what my research was showing me. I didn't try their, their 2019 shader yet, no. I guess that's also a part of it too, is like I'm, I'm entering production on, on the Harry Hope project like right now. And I'm trying to figure out, are we Maya? Are we like Unity? Are we Unreal? And I've got to be careful about committing to stuff that's still in, you know, there's alpha mode, like it's not ready yet. So I have to be, I have to be very careful of getting too dependent on technologies that don't, that aren't going to be in the final releases or that don't currently work 100%. I just have to be really careful. Um, so, okay, and Blender. Um, yeah, actually, er Eric, uh, who's on our team, is using Blender. He's doing a lot of our trees. Um, he's taking my tree drawings and building animated trees inside of Blender. So we are using Blender quite a bit, even now. Um, but as far as like, yeah, I, we, we are considering Blender as being something we use in the future for future productions, for sure. Um, and then what is Yashti, Yashti is what influenced my art style? Um, I, my art style has been influenced by, I think mostly what I'm not good at doing. So, um, there are artists that I really, really love, um, but actually I didn't have a lot of really influential artists that I was, I was resonating from 
um, when I was when earlier on. So it's been more recently, I have more artists that I'm kind of following or into. Um, but I mean, like, you know, the, the usual stuff of like Frazetta and stuff like that. And that stuff kind of inspired me. But also, um, yeah, a lot of my art style inspiration also came from animation and old video games. And also, I guess another thing that, that influences my art style is the limitations of what I'm capable of doing. So, or the platforms that I know or understand. So I tend to work, if I'm not good at something or I don't have the capacity to do something, I will design an aesthetic that will work with that limitation. Okay, so I've roughed this in a little bit. Let's get a little bit of green in here. It doesn't look great yet, but I mean, it's coming along. I'll try to see if I can get some like warm green in here. How does that look? Might work. Sorry guys, I'm sorry this is so slow and boring. Okay, so eventually what we're going to do is we're going to use other brushes. So I'm just going to use like ink brushes and paper brushes and stuff like that. Like I've got a bunch of, a few of these brushes to start drawing out some structures on the tree. And that way I can kind of guide, direct my um, shading a little bit. Unless we want the tree to be really loose, which it could totally be too. Kind of the downside of having so many layers is that you have to, well, first off, you have to be disciplined enough to know which layers need detail and which ones don't, which I'm not doing a good job at right now. This needs a little more light here, and I have to get my shadows sorted out a bit better here. So we're backlit, so we need a little bit of that. Eventually I'll come in with a white and start lightening this stuff up. Let's go a little lighter. Okay, but for now we'll just block in mostly. Okay, so let's do the next layer in front, see how little we can actually see. It's ridiculous, I spent all that time. But I mean, when it's 3D, you'll actually see more behind it and in front of it. But you don't want to spend too much time one way or the other. So I'm just gonna put this a little bit over so I can just grab some of the, we'll do the core to start. So let's just get the core to this kind of purple color that we ended up just finding. Mm -hmm. So I'm just doing that nice cool color. And since I've established some colors already, I'm just going to start pulling that in. And I'll think of this almost as a separate tree for now. Because really, once we really start thinking of it, we're going to want to grab that, like, see that trunk, how it's casting a shadow, that branch. We're going to want to take that branch and kind of put the shadow on the, on this a little bit. You could try to do that in 3D, like let the 3D do that. It can work, um, but we'll probably do a bit of it ourselves. But for now, we need, we'll treat it like a separate tree. Let's just bring it over here, I guess. And let's move around. We'll move this painting over a little more. I don't know if I'm actually doing this right, guys. I don't I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the right way to do this thing is. I'm kind of just thinking the tree's got a warmish, kind of a brownish warm bark to it. Is it dark? Is it light? I think it's like probably light-ish because, I mean, I have it very dark in the painting, but I think it's kind of dead. So it's going to be a little bit light and grayish colored. The main thing I'm trying to figure out right now is the light, light and dark sources. Like where is the light coming from? And I'm trying to work in color so that I'm not working backwards and trying to reverse engineer 
it so that the color works, which sometimes I do, and then it can be a good workflow, but I can I find it also can be very limiting. Actually, I just watched a really interesting video on working with grayscale to, do you guys ever do that? Work in grayscale and then add color later? Actually, I just watched a video. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grab the video. If you guys, any of you guys are interested in painting, uh, this guy's channel is really good. I'm gonna just check out my history really quick up here. Um, where is it? Just keep bear with me for one second. Oh, it's this one. I'm gonna pop this link in the dashboard here, so you guys can see. But I, I highly recommend this guy's channel. It's really good. You guys should check out this, uh, check out the guy's work. It's really very talented, amazing digital artist, amazing. Like, there's not that many out there that, that are at his level, in my opinion. Okay, so this tree's like a little, I'm, you know what I'm also realizing that's going to happen is as I'm painting this tree, I'm gonna slowly get better at, I'm gonna gradually get better at painting because I'm not in this groove yet. I've been, I've been working in pen and ink um, and watercolors, like real watercolors, for the last like several couple of weeks. So my digital painting groove is a little broken. So you'll see like I'll flounder a lot more as I'm trying to find my rhythm here. So this initial tree, I might end up like completely painting over it. It's just part of the process, at least my process, it tends to be the way I have to work. Um, so I'm gonna slowly find my way back into digital painting. Um, that's very gray. So anything back here, we'll kind of let it be like a coolish gray color, just for now. Since the wood doesn't, isn't, I, I'm thinking the wood doesn't have tons of color to it, but we'll see, we'll see. Eventually we're gonna wanna spatter some greens and all kinds of other things in there. But we're backlit, so we should have, a, but it's not black. Like it, we're, even though we're backlit, we still have a lot of snow everywhere. So things aren't going to be 100% black unless you're quite close to the camera. So that tree, I like the flow of this, this one better so far. I like what's happening right here. This is cool. I'm gonna try to get more of that on the other, on the other layer. And gradually we're going from our purples and we'll move more into our kind of greenish area. So I'm just gonna put all this in right here. This is very cool, but that's okay. Eventually we'll kind of have some like warmer greens and stuff like that. But we need, we need a bit of transition. And the transition from this color to here is kind of this bluish color. Uh, yeah, Marco Marco Bucci is that his is that his name? I'm sure it is. Do you ever look at his work? Do you ever follow his work? Oh, did the link not work? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you the guys. I'll tell you the channel name. It is yeah. It's Marco Bucci, just like you just like you said, and it's his one video on going from grayscale to color and he talks about how going from grayscale to color can can give you um, undesirable results because you lose a lot of your inventiveness in your color because the values get really close in color and you'll lose you don't you know something that happens really fast and expressive you don't get the same feeling if you do it and try to recolor it so he suggested or uh, one way to work is you work in grayscale to get the rough sketch first then you do you add your color and then from there you flatten the image and you start painting right on top of it with the color included and i think that the what i can gather from that um oh hey okay. <laughs> thanks for um anyways what i gathered from that for me it's because I, I tend to work i tend to to gravitate towards black and white first because i'm, I'm not a very confident painter 
but that idea of painting it black and white first a little bit and then throwing your color in so that you actually work from it. it's kind of like what we just did a little bit is that you're starting with really rough shading first and then you have color and you're just kind of committed now to start working with color because you put it in um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here but I was a little inspired from that from his video today but I still like really I do really suck at painting <laughs> I'm not I really struggle with painting I want to be better at it for sure Okay, so let's imagine here we're gonna get this and we'll probably get a little bit warmer because this should be a bit of wood or something. We'll see, I'm not sure. Maybe this is moss. I feel like maybe on the back of the tree it should be lots of moss and snow. Oh, you found him on DeviantArt, cool. That stuff's really good. I just ordered one of his workshops. Let's grab it. If our moss is kind of this green, no, moss would be more like this color but towards the sky, it would be cooler and grayer, I imagine, like this. There's just not much color in it. I'm thinking maybe we'll put moss on the back of the tree. I'm not sure, we'll figure it out. So let's, I wanna tackle this other tree, this other tree again, and get a little more of a nice flow on it, this front tree, or this one back one, let's get, let's get some of our flow back on this tree. I feel like it's missing a bit of flow. Now that we're finding our rhythm a little bit. I feel like that guy is painting, what's his name? Marco Bucci or Bucci? Yeah, Bucci, it's probably Bucci, I don't know. But I feel like his style is very, very Renaissance-y paint, painterly, especially for digital. It's, it's rare to see such a level of expressiveness in painting. Um, in digital painting. It feels like he's really quite grasped the concepts of painting. Okay, so let's go here. I'm gonna cool this off. I think anything on the back side, we're gonna go cooler. We don't wanna go warm. We wanna go really cool into the grays, into the blues. Warm on the sun, more on the sun side, and then nice and cool on the back side. Like we need light on the back side and we need light on the sky facing side, but we don't want it to um, be warm. We want it to be cool, so it's more reflected. It's like reflected light from the sky and the clouds. So even here, this even if there was snow, which we're gonna delete for now, we don't want that to be really warm because it's not in sunlight. It's not in direct light. So I'm just gonna kill this off for a second. Oops. I'm keeping my brush opacity at about 50%. Um, have any of you guys ever tried um, painting with just like a, a really simple brush? I guess a circle or something like that? I tried my, I tried it, I think actually I tried it with this when I first painted this. It was like the first time I ever really let myself paint that way before. It was interesting, I'd never done it and it was kind of cool. Let's double check how much of this we're gonna see, a lot. This one definitely needs more detail. This is probably, this piece here is our most, most likely our most detailed piece. Brighten that up, green it up a little bit. So do you like that method, Pichelovic? just bringing a little light in because I'm just trying to find some structure for the, the roots. I'm just trying to get a flow for the tree and find a nice place to put like, usually I have like, I have holes and stuff in the tree um, and I want to find a place to be able to put that in. So that would probably be here where we might have like a really dark pit in the tree like that. And then this one would go in front of it like that. And then we can sort of push the hole a little bit in there too. So you can see already it's starting to work, maybe. Sort of it's like that, I guess, or it would be here. I try not to get too precious about how the layers are supposed to work together and think more about like what looks cool and what's fun. So eventually, um, once we get our layers in, we'll start putting some little shadow bits and stuff in there. But we're starting to get something. 
And I think too is what we could do, um, we're going to want to start adding some like irregularities and different kind of things like that. And that can just come from adding bright spots and dark spots on the trunk itself. And then we can start getting a little bit, a little bit of different kinds of structures on the tree. But I don't want to do that without, I don't want to do it non-destructively. I don't think, I don't know, I'm just kind of, you can, I don't want to lose this nice structure we have on the tree right now. Like I kind of like some of this flow. I just want to be careful not, not to wreck it because I can sometimes take things too far and then you lose all the work you did. And you have to find a way to get it back. I think this branch will put in the back like it is, or in the middle, we could put it right in the middle. So I'll just show you really quick because I have to go soon, unfortunately. But I'll show you really quick one of the methods for adding a bit of detail to this thing is um, if you go to our, we have our sort of our tree thing. I've got all these barks that I made. And this is something you should probably do later. I'm hearing dinging sounds for some reason. I'm hearing all these dinging sounds. I don't know what they mean. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, 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 my bad. Okay, there's a ding happening over and over again. Um, anyways, so these brushes that I made here, these are a um, my kind of like bark brushes. Whoops, I've been drawing on this layer and it wasn't even turned on. So I made these for helping to create tree, tree detail. I have a whole bunch of different kinds. Um, and this is just, this is something that we'll use